So we have to talk about nutrition and recycling when we speak about the hyphae and that mycelial network. I can see that large branching occurring under here below ground. And so fungi are heterotrophs. They do not produce their own food. They're not going to undergo photosynthesis like plants can. So they acquire their nutrients by heterotrophic means where they have to consume organic matter. They're going to do this by absorption. So having that huge hyphae network underground and above ground in a reproductive body, that's going to help with absorbing the surrounding nutrients. This invasive hyphae network can enter tissues. They can consume the cells of dead organisms. We're talking about our decomposers, very, very important decomposers of our ecosystems. Uh, basically, fungi are going to digest food outside of its body by secreting digestive enzymes. So we have beautiful digestive enzymes that help us break down food and consume it. Fungi actually do so outside of their bodies. Once that food is broken down, they can then absorb those tasty nutrients into their systems. So let's discuss a symbiotic or mutualistic relationship between fungi and plants. The rhizosphere is an area of a plant. Here I'm showing you a tree here, and I actually have the rhizosphere, just the roots here that I'm showing you, that's surrounding the plant that's going to be inhabited by microorganisms. Let's think lots of bacteria here in the soil surrounding these root structures. Think of fungi. So that's known as a rhizosphere. It turns out that we can have something called a mycorrhizosphere, where you're going to have those roots being surrounded by a fungal hyphae. So here's my fungus, and you can see I'm shaking hands with the roots of the plants. That's showing you that they have a symbiotic relationship. Those fungi are benefiting from being closely located to this plant root area, and that plant is also benefiting from that fungi being there. Why? Why does this happen? Why are they both benefiting? So the plant benefits because the fungus's hyphae are located close to their roots. So the plant now has greater access to water and nutrients. It actually increases and helps absorb those nutrients because that hyphae is also helping with that process. Okay, so the plant gets more nutrients. In return, the fungus benefits because the plants, remember that plants are autotrophs, they're gonna make nice tasty sugars via the process of photosynthesis. Well, those sugars can get transferred to the fungus. That fungus then gets nice tasty glucose in order to, to provide for their energy means. Uh, many of our, this is important because many of our food crops depend on this relationship. Some fungi can have a parasitic relationship, so a positive negative where they benefit and the other species does not benefit at all. Um, a th about 30% of fungi make their living as parasites. You have probably heard a couple of the examples that I'm going to go over. Uh, a great majority of these fungal parasites are not necessarily humans only, they can also infect plants. So let's go ahead and go over a couple of specific examples. The first one I want to go over is a yeast infection caused by the fungal organism Canada albicans. This is a common vaginal yeast infection that can occur. Here I can see an overgrowth. Actually present the slide. Okay, so here is actually an overgrowth of that yeast in the vaginal canal. And the vaginal canal has mutualistic or commensal, I should say, relationships between um, yeast, bacteria, but it's when there's an overgrowth of this organism where there's an issue uh, and we see certain symptoms occurring that would be detrimental to the host, to the female uh, in this case. And so a lot of itchiness, redness, soreness, result. The leet's foot is another example of a fungal infection that usually occurs between the toes. Uh, it's caused by different fungi. It's not any particular fungi that causes this. There's a different number of species that can cause this. And usually they like, they like that nice warm environment usually found in that sweaty um, area. This athlete's foot, it is quite infectious between species. So if you wear the socks of somebody who recently had 
who has this infection, you are most likely as well going to get that infection. Ringworm is another fungal infection. It occurs on the top layer of your skin. It got its name not because it is a worm, that an animal that causes this infection, this parasitic infection, it's actually a fungus that's going to cause this infection. But it was given the name ringworm for that typical ring-like appearance in the rash that forms on the layer of your skin. It's this red circular rash that's common in ringworm. It is quite contagious as well. Um, yeah, so it's a fungus, not a worm. I, last thing I wanna go over is that lots of plants uh, have these parasitic relationships with fungus. Uh, and it leaves are rich in sugars due to the event of photosynthesis. And so they're actually prime targets for these parasites that are in those leaves in order to latch onto and suck all those nutrients from that host. The plant's not going to benefit at all from that relationship. The fungus does, gets its energy needs 